So you remember that really good movie that Disney released in 2016 that I never made a video on? No, no, the, the good one. Well, here in the UK, it's called Zootropolis, not Zootopia. Maybe you knew that. Maybe you didn't. I don't really care. Just keep that in mind, because despite the fact I changed every time I wrote Zootropolis into the script into Zootopia, I might still slip up, and I don't want a barrage of comments coming like, Yo, what's Zootropolis? It's called Zootopia. Idiot. Okay. And while I have no idea why they felt the need to change the title from Zootopia to Zootropolis over here- Don't you understand? If we don't change the title, the box office will be affected severely! That is not what I'm going to be talking about today. Because today, I'm going to try to explain how the economy works in Zootropolis. Oh sh- How you doing? But all jokes aside, one thing that everyone will have noticed about this film is that this animal city is so corrupt that it might as well be real life. Like there's such a thing as being too real Disney and making a film where the underlying messages are racism and corruption? How are you just gonna replace the people with animals and play this off as a kid's film? Shake man. <laughs> and I think quite possibly the most corrupt thing about this city is the economy. Because it makes no sense. In one scene, we see a bunny, Judy, buy a $15 elephant-sized ice lolly. Sorry, I forgot I'm Americanizing this video. A $15 elephant-sized popsicle. Which I guess seems reasonable considering how large the popsicle is. Like, that could feed her for a week. Not that I would recommend only eating a popsicle for a week. That would be terrible for your health. And I'm not a bad influence, unlike some people. But the problem comes in when you realise that this popsicle that can feed a bunny for a week is the exact same price to an elephant to whom it's only a snack. Like a dessert, like a third of a free course meal. Meaning a nice meal out for an elephant could cost well over $50. And you've got to assume that this doesn't just apply to food and that basically anything would cost more for a large animal because it needs to be bigger. Meaning housing, clothes, cars, everything would cost more for a large animal. And a good example of this that we have evidence for is their phone. Judy has the obvious pun on apple carrot phone. Meanwhile, Chief Bogo has his own kind of of phone, which not only doesn't seem to be made by this carrot company, but is also significantly bigger. Since both the phones seem to be an average size for a phone in proportion to the animals using them, but when comparing the size of Chief Bogo to Judy, Chief Bogo's phone must be huge in comparison to her. And it doesn't take a genius to understand that a larger phone is going to cost more money simply because more materials are used when making it. Which means there must be a complete economy crisis in Zootopia because the price of living is so much higher for larger animals than it is for smaller animals. And this is a crisis proven by the fact that this entire economy is manipulated by Nick every day. He buys an elephant-sized popsicle for $15 and then turns it into nearly 100 lemming-sized popsicles which he sells for $2 each. Making a huge profit. Judy even suggests it's enough to have made him a millionaire. $200 a day, $360 65 days a year since you were 12, that's two decades at times 20, which is 1,460,000, I think. I mean, <laughs> I am just a dumb bunny. But most interestingly, what Nick does isn't even illegal. When Judy confronts Nick about this, he, well, here's the clip. You're under arrest. Really? For what? Gee, I don't know. How about selling food without a permit? Transporting undeclared commerce across borough lines? False advertising? Permit? Receipt of declared commerce? and I didn't falsely advertise anything. Eventually, Judy does find out he's breaking the law, but it's for tax evasion, meaning it is completely legal in Zootopia to buy a large product from a large animal, split it into multiple small products, and sell them off to smaller animals for profit. Which might explain why the elephants who sold the popsicle to him were so persistent they could refuse to sell to anyone they wanted. They only wanted their food to be sold to elephants because they were well aware the economy could be manipulated. Talk about Pixar shorts creating problems. The Zootopia economy is now Next level. And this completely proves that everything is more expensive for a large animal than it is for a small animal. This honestly just seems ridiculous. How are elephants able to afford to go out to ice cream parlors? How aren't like all large animals living in extreme poverty because they're living off a mouse's ration of food? Like seriously, if I find out that Francine is homeless behind the scenes of the films, I will be so so mad. But on the contrary, why aren't like all rodents multi multi millionaires? You know, due to the money they're saving on like food and housing and everything. Surely the creators thought this through. Like, there is no way all the animals use the same currency. Firstly, it's just illogical because there's no way a mouse is going to be carrying a giraffe sized coin around. It'd be like the size of their house. And vice versa, a giraffe isn't going to be carrying around a mouse sized coin because it wouldn't even be able to see it. But then Judy pays for the elephant sized popsicle with a rabbit sized $20 note, so I don't even know what to think. Okay, so maybe they all use the same currency. 
currency, but coins and notes come in different sizes for different animals. But that still doesn't resolve the original issue. The larger animals get paid more than smaller animals to do the same job. Wait, wait. I've just realized. Large animals and small animals don't do the same job. For the most part in Zootopia, we see types of animals grouped together doing the same job. It's implied that basically all rabbits are carrot farmers. All the bankers seem to be lemmings. The only animals working at the DMV are sloths. And literally the only job with some variety with the animals working for them is the police force. But even when it comes to the police, all of them are large animals. You know, before Judy. But then one of the biggest points made in the film is that she is the first ever rabbit police officer. Like when Nick becomes a police officer at the end of the film, he's described as their first fox. They never even had a fox before Nick. Which I think as good as proves that there is not a single job done by both large animals and small animals. So that means it would just make a lot of sense to suggest that jobs done by large animals are significantly better paid than jobs done by small animals. So while being a banker is considered a very well paid job in in our world, in Zootopia, being a police officer would be much better paid. And this, in turn, would solve every problem created by the economy. The cost of living is significantly higher for larger animals, but they also get paid significantly more so they can afford it. Which means, technically speaking, everyone is equal. So take that, George Orwell, you can create an animal world where everyone's equal. Disney basically just did it. I'm not crazy, am I? I just personally think the Zootopia economy kind of makes sense, you know, if you look at it from a certain perspective. And actually, if this whole concept theory is true, it would mean that Judy is one of the richest people in all of Zootropolis. Like, technically speaking, if all the police officers get paid about the same amount of money, she'd be making enough for an elephant to live on. Also, it gives another reason to why Nick decided to become a police officer at the end of the film. Because he was a self-made millionaire from his dodgy job, but he just dropped it to become a police officer kind of uncharacteristically. But now we know that being a police officer would make him a fortune. It all makes sense, doesn't it? And also, he'd be really good at it. But, you know. Anyway, I'm gonna end this video before I ruin this film for you anymore. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. And I've said that twice now, so you better do it. You can watch another Disney video by clicking here. You can subscribe by clicking here. Also, follow me on Instagram. I'm nearly at 20,000 followers. I'm like 500 away. So make sure to drop me a follow and check out my other social medias in the description down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.